This is Twit. Bandwidth for Know How is brought to you by Cashfly. This episode of Know How is brought to you by Blue Apron. Blue Apron will send you fresh, high-quality ingredients to cook delicious meals with simple step-by-step instructions right to your door. See what's on the menu this week and get your first three meals free with free shipping by going to blueapron.com slash twit. That's blueapron.com slash twit. And by Corning. Corning's incredibly durable Thunderbolt and USB 3.0 optical cables are longer, thinner, lighter, and stronger. Go to Cording.com slash twit to save up to $130 on their superior Thunderbolt optical cables. On today's show, you'll know how to make a super cheap odor eater. It's the Twitch show where we build, ban, break, and upgrade. I'm Father Robert Balasser. And I'm Brian Burnett. And for the next however many minutes it takes, we're going to show you some of the projects that we've been geeking out to so you can take them home and geek out on your own. Brian! Padre. Uh, you have a, had an interesting day. Um, you were in Sacramento just a few hours ago. <laughs> uh, yeah, actually, uh, it's, I found out it takes an hour and a half to get there, and if you're really going as fast as you can, only an hour and 10 minutes to get back. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I got up early to, to go to Sacramento, so <laughs> to drop up a, my motorcycle rim, which was good. This is, yeah, it's a very geeky segue. Uh, drop off my motorcycle rim so that I could go to Laguna Seca this weekend ah. with my, my friends. Uh, no, that's right. You you uh, you broke your bike, didn't you? Uh, I hit yeah. Well, the I road hit, the road broke the your road bike. broke my bike. Yeah. It wasn't my fault that it dented my rim, but Aww. I did the responsible thing and took it to a professional. I didn't try and heat it up with a blowtorch or the hammer or something. That so. always works, by the way. Yeah, that would have been time. yeah. Because when you're on two wheels. <laughs> Yeah, you you, yeah, you see, want that that's the fear. Thing. You don't have a whole lot of safety margin when it's just two wheels yeah, and, and you, you know. in the open, so you kind of need it to work <laughs> properly. Yeah, exactly. I, I take the maintenance pretty uh, strict. We could have just 3D printed you a new rim. Uh, yeah, and then it would have just shredded itself. Um, oh, you! Yeah. In that case, you would hope it would break as you sit on it, not at sixty miles an hour. Down <laughs> yeah, the freeway, down yeah, as it grenades on the freeway. <laughs> well, we're not here to talk about grenading Brian's bike. We actually got a lot of feedback about this. By the way, I'm calling him Norman. Yeah? yeah. Is it your little pet, Norman? Pet. I'm going to add eyes and feet. And I like that idea. Th this was our odor eater from last week. People right. really like this. Uh, evidently, uh, we stink. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, when you're geeking out, the yeah. tendency is the to not shower, you know? Because you're so focused on watching all those Star Trek movies that... Uh, you might need an odor eater after you, you, that you marathon. May, yeah. But it's just, it's something that's nice to have in your equipment rack because mm -hmm. we're always going to come up in, into situations, if you're, if you're tinkering, where there's going to be unwanted smells. And I, I, this usually actually, a confined space. Confined space. I've actually been using this for uh, my, my soldering uh, um, area. So it sucks the fumes away from me, Smart. which is kind of nice. Yeah, that's a good nice. idea. Rather than just inhaling them like you usually do. They smell nice. But <laughs> it explains a lot. It's though. like a flower, but for geeks. <laughs> but we had people who said they liked this idea. They did not really like the cost. Unfortunately. Which it wasn't terribly expensive, but you did need to... I mean, this uh, this is most of the expense. So, I mean, this entire this? assembly is going to be... This is like $40 to $50. Oh, so yeah, the whole thing right. is going to be between $50 and $60. Uh, if, mm. if you have some of this equipment at home, then it's going to be less. But people were saying, look, we, we like the concept, but uh, we'd like it to be smaller and we'd like it to be less expensive. Okay. So over the weekend, I went ahead and design that. We put got, it into some coffee grounds? Uh, yeah, we're going to go over this a little bit later, but <laughs> <laughs> whereas as Norman here is going to cost Norman. you between $50 and $60, uh -huh. this thing will cost you between $15 and $25. Nice. Yeah, and uh, it's, it's super easy to do, so how, this is yeah, what we're going to do. Yeah, how long did it take you to make that? Um, oh, like a day. I, 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 you, we'll talk From a little bit about this, finish. but okay. the, the 3D printed parts. That's the uh, hard part? Well, I went through a lot of different revisions. I yeah. kept changing my mind about what I wanted. Well, you know what the hardest part is? Coming up with a name for it. Uh, well, no, this one doesn't have a This is Norman. This has no name. 
Hmm. He's disposable. <laughs> He's disposable. We don't name the, the t things that we make that we don't care about. I don't want to throw <laughs> away something I've named. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Poor Jeez. little nibbler. Oh, You're going to throw him no. out? <laughs> He's got a soul. But we're going to get to this in just a bit. We're okay. going to give you a, a whole episode on designing and then building something like our, our mini Norman. Mm -hmm. But first, there's been a parting shot that we have been delaying and delaying and delaying <laughs> for about a month now. Because uh, go figure, we talk a little bit and then uh, we have to end the show. <laughs> we have to end the show. But we, we wanted to give him his proper ups because we've been telling people that they should join our Google Plus group and give us pictures of their projects, videos of their projects. Yeah. We actually had one from a, uh, a fan by the name of Mark Olson. who uh, uh, Brian, what, what did he build? All right. So he wrote to us, I did a build of the steampunk goggles from Know How episode 187 a few, with a few mods. Hmm. I beefed up the power and ground connections between the goggle sides using an 8 gauge str stranded wire. I replaced the original power source with a lithium ion rechargeable 9 volt battery and a UBEC and added a Franken style knife switch for on off control. I also mo modified the code. I made one of the potentiometer selectable patterns cycle to row through all the patterns one by one. Then I noticed the code was originally based on some brilliant fast LED patterns that were designed for linear light strips, but of course the goggles use two circular rings. In particular, the Cylon. Cynely? Cynelon. Cynelon pattern seemed like it would benefit from a remapping of the LEDs in a non-linear order. I made the moving light go in a figure eight pattern between the goggles. I added a new racetrack pattern, which does two Cynelon <laughs> cars. <laughs> uh, it's been a long morning. Uh, Cylon cars moving at slightly different rates. I also added a spinner pattern with four dots per side that spin and made one side spin back and forth and the other side spin consistently in one direction. Finally, I looked back at the other Fantastic Code sim samples from Fast LED and adapted the Fire 2012 pattern to the circular rings. So first of all, Awesome. Mark, fantastic. Kudos. Very well done. Double thumbs. This is exactly what we've been asking our, our fans to do, right? I mean, yeah. take our projects, make them better. Participate in the, uh, the maker. The making process. And that was one thing that you had tried to do, right? Was uh, yeah. c the infinity loop where it would connect around and stuff? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, not, it's not too difficult. It just got really... Uh, board and then yeah. we've gone to another well, you, project. Yeah, you're done with it. But I'm glad that he did. Yeah, <laughs> And uh, you know what? The, the nice thing about something like this is this is a project that you're going to continually improve. In fact, I just went to a concert the other night and I just happened to have these in my <laughs> trunk. So <laughs> I brought them out. Happened to have, I just happened you just to carry your goggles wherever you go. <laughs> you're sitting in my trunk. So I, you know, I'm like, ah, you know, I'm going to yeah. wear it in. And I got to say, people kept going, <laughs> where did you get those? I want to yeah. set. I mean, most of them were high. So yeah. Well, that helps. Yeah, that's yeah. easy to impress, but, but they're kind of fun. I still remember when we first made this project, our uh, new TD, I think she, she's still new, right? Kara? Yeah, yeah. Kara? Kara, right? Kara. Uh, she said we could make a fortune off of those at Burning like, Man. Like Etsy, yeah. Put or Etsy, Etsy, yeah. Burning Man. Can we attach these to Norbert here? And Norman. Norman. His name is Norman. <laughs> Do it right, please. Wait, hold I don't on. want to get too attached in case something happens to him. I, I, I can see the goggles right? getting caught in the fan and suddenly and Norman then, just eats the goggles. Yeah. Wait. Now he's there got like go. a little face. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if I like that. <laughs> wait, wait, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> something really bad is about to happen, there, I can tell. Yeah, that's typical. No, there we show. go. Okay, so Norman's, Norman's got his goggles. <sighs> So, folks, if you do have a project, if you've improved on a project that we had here on Know How, mm -hmm. please, please give us pictures, give us videos, give us a description yeah. of what you did. We love showing off the projects of our know-it-alls. Yes. No, I really appreciate Mark doing that project. Super cool. Uh, only thing is maybe next time, <laughs> if I have to read all that, you, you <laughs> could read that. You could put that in your video. It would be awesome. Yeah. Uh, and actually, we, we did have uh, a couple of fans who sent us projects that they've narrated. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, please put that in there. I, I might do a little bit of editing to make it fit into the show, but um, I love it when you tell me what you've done because nothing makes us happier than seeing the proud parents of a new tinker. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right. Now, we will be moving on to our super cheap carbon filter in just a bit, but before we do that, you know what I want to do, I want to do Brian? What's that? I want to pay some bills. Yeah, well, you know, I'm feeling kind of hungry. Yeah, yeah, the problem is 
Geeks tend not to eat well. Mm, it's so much easier just to go to McDonald's, like McDonald's. I did this morning. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not big on McDonald's, but you, actually, I, I will confess hmm? to a guilty pleasure. What's that? As of late, this last month, I've probably gone to Domino's, like, four times. <laughs> well, you know what? The, the nice thing is, is when you go to Domino's, you share with everyone, because I think it, it gives you an excuse, right? You know, my favorite part is walking into Domino's, and you're, you're like, I hope no one recognizes me. <laughs> and they know they you just, by name. Yeah, yeah. they're like, Actually, hey, Padre! No, actually, the last time I went in, as I walked in, the lady goes, Oh, yeah, you got a pickup, right? I'm like, uh-oh. <laughs> oh, too much. Too much. Okay, time to find a new domino. Yeah, but you know what? It's just too easy if you're a geek to live the geek lifestyle. And the geek lifestyle is getting food on the go, eating in front of your monitor. Mm -hmm. It's not good. It's not good for your body. It's not good for your soul. And it's definitely not good for the habits that you form over a lifetime that will keep you healthy. If only there was a way for us to get good quality meals delivered to our home so that we can keep to our busy geek schedule that were both healthy and fun to cook and prepare ourselves. Brian, it's just, well, I guess it's too bad that doesn't exist. You know what, I think it does exist. Yeah. And you can learn while you cook too. Oh, that's right, because it's called Blue Apron. A Blue Apron is the best way for you to get healthy, pre-measured, pre-prepared meals delivered to your door at your own convenience. Now, Blue Apron's mission is to make incredible home cooking easy. They want to bring it to everyone while supporting a more sustainable food system, setting the highest standards for ingredients and building a community of home chefs. They deliver seasonal recipes along with fresh, high quality ingredients to make delicious home cooked meals. Every meal comes with a step-by-step, -step, easy to follow recipe card and pre-portioned ingredients. No more searching through your spice cabinet to find just a tiny bit more rosemary or, or this spice, that herb. Blue Apron does it all for you. Now you can save time and money. Shopping at the grocery store is 60% more expensive than Blue Apron. And if you spend a lot of time eating out or at high-end grocery chains, you can now spend under $10 per person for healthy home-cooked meals. Try to beat that. Blue Apron lets you customize your recipes every week based on your dietary preferences, and you can choose a delivery option that fits your needs. There's no weekly commitment, so you only get deliveries when you want them, and they deliver to 99% of the continental United States. They set the highest standards for quality for their community of over 150 local farms, fisheries, and ranchers across the United States. They source their seafood from sustainable sources. Beef is raised too mainly. Chickens are free range. Pork is raised naturally. And regenerative farming practices are used for produce so they don't obliterate the land. Now, by shipping the exact amount required for the recipes, they're also saving. You're not wasting things because you buy four portions of something that you're only going to use two of or one of. Now, whether it's Japanese ramen noodles, wild-caught Alaska salmon, or heirloom tomatoes, Blue Apron brings you the best. And not only do they support a more sustainable food system, but it supports happy and healthy families. I, I really do believe this. When you take the time to know what's going into your food and to prepare it yourself, not only does it taste better, it just feels better. Now, new recipes are created every week by Blue Apron's culinary team and are not repeated within that year. How's that for variety? You can cook meals like seared cod and potato salad with radishes, or crispy capers and marinated cucumber, or, I love this one, spiced pork tacos with avocado, pickled onion, and elote-style corn. Folks, eat better. And do it with Blue Apron. You can check out this week's menu and get your first three meals free with free shipping by going to blueapron.com slash twit. That's blueapron.com slash twit. You will love how good it feels and tastes to create incredible home-cooked meals with Blue Apron. So don't wait. Visit blueapron.com slash twit. Eat better now with Blue Apron. And we thank Blue Apron for their support of know-how. All right, Brian, we, we got to get Norman off the table here because he's kind of <laughs> done. Be gentle with him, though. Be gentle with Norman. He's a, he's a, he's a good bot. Uh, but Powering down. Pow oh, poor Norman. As fun as Norman is, actually, if you could put Norman, Norman sure. back there. As fun as Norman was, people wanted something that was a little easier to assemble and a little bit less expensive. So I went ahead and created this. Now, this is activated carbon. It's a different kind of carbon than we find in one of those filters. It's actually quite a bit cheaper, but uh, it does the same job. This was designed for cleaning water but the same principle that allows it to clean water cleans the fluid that is air. Okay, so like it, this is the same sort of thing you'd find in a Brita filter. Right, right, but. yeah. It, it activated carbon is, act we'll talk about this in a later episode when we get into our, our Green Geek, our Grow How segments. Mm -hmm. 
But essentially activated carbon is burnt material that you've steamed or chemically treated to open up all the little fissures that are inside the surface to give it more surface area. And then it just catches the particles that come through it? Right, right. Okay. Uh, but that also means that as time goes on and it catches those particles, eventually that surface area gets clogged, that that, which sense. is why carbon filters will eventually run out. Right. Yeah. Okay. But l let's look at how we built this because I wanted to make the design super, super simple. What we started with was this. This is just carbon masters carbon. And, and actually, Kara, if you go to that first link there, uh, you can get a two pack of this on Amazon right now, delivered for free for under $22. Not bad. So you're talking about $11 for a full jar of carbon. Now, I don't know how long it's going to last because, of course, we, we have just got yeah. this thing. Uh, but the nice thing about this is, A, it's refillable, and B, I designed the project so that it's using the same jar that the carbon came in. No, no need to create a new jar. <laughs> that you makes just, sense. You just use this, right? Yeah. Now, uh, there are a couple of ways you could use this. These do come with this little media bag. So it's designed so you can uh. pour in some carbon into that and like drop that into an aquarium and absorb all the impurities. Oh, uh, okay. So is that what you would normally use this for without, you know, drilling yeah, holes yeah, and stuff in? Yeah, that's that's what it's for. That's <laughs> okay. what it's for. Uh, but we're I mean and we can use this. But uh, let's go over the parts list that we're going to need. So this okay. of course is we need our carbon uh, because the carbon is the key to it. It's not, none of this will work without carbon. Without carbon, <laughs> activated uh, carbon, it's Wait. just a, an air. Pusher. I can't just put like, you know, coffee grounds in there or something. Uh, you could. Uh, <laughs> your room would smell like coffee. I'm okay I mean, with that's that. That's cool. Yeah. You, that's told. Actually, yes, you could do that. If you if you wanted to make yourself something that would odorize your room, yeah, this will work just fine as well. Like, uh, what are those things that people plug in the walls? You know, they heat up and that. Oh, like must... the Glade plug. -ins. Yeah. yeah don't what, do that. Could we make our own at so, something yes, out of this? Could. Yeah. Yes, you could. It would probably not last as long. <laughs> All right. uh, you're also going to need a 120 millimeter fan. Now, remember, I bought a 12, a five pack of these uh, these F12 yeah. fans. So you got uh, a but bunch Kara, of these laying around. Yeah, go ahead and go to that link, the second link there. Uh, this is a, a decent one. Uh, if, oh, LEDs uh, too, yeah, huh? Light it up, light it up. <laughs> Bling it out. Yeah. Now, now this this particular one is 1093, but I mean, if you go into Amazon right now, just look for a 120 millimeter fan. Yeah. Any of those is going to work for you. The, or any old PC that you might have laying around that you don't use anymore. Precisely. You just need a 120 millimeter fan. And that's important because I designed all the pieces for 120 millimeter fans. Yeah. Uh, you could use a smaller one. But you just have to redesign it for You that. just have to redesign it. Uh, okay, here's another thing. Uh, Kara, if you could go to this third link. You're going to need... <laughs> Huh? Yeah. Um, <laughs> you're gonna need some legs. No, you're gonna need some pantyhose. Oh, that's what we're <laughs> getting. Okay. okay. Uh, by the way, my superior received this box, <laughs> and he, he comes to my room. He goes, Robert, um, you got something today. <laughs> he hands me the pantyhose. I'm like, it's for a project. I swear. He goes, uh -huh. I don't want to know. And uh -huh. I'm gonna walk away. <laughs> <laughs> Are you feeling pretty today? I am feeling pretty. <laughs> now, you could skip the pantyhose, and you could just use the media bag that they included. It's the mm -hmm. same idea. You need something that can hold the, the pieces right. from getting out <laughs> of, the, of the jar. That's right. Right. <laughs> so, yep, yep. And pantyhose well, are a nice, fine mesh. You're mm -hmm. also going to want to uh, use a little bit of foam. And most of us have foam at home. Don't use styrofoam. You want a foam that is porous. So, like... I can blow through this, uh -huh. and it doesn't. Real, there's no real restriction to the airflow. Okay. Uh, I stole this off of some of my Pelican cases, but oh, I any, thought you were gonna say from Pixel Core because they had a bunch of that stuff for, that for stuff. their they Pelican did. cases. Did. Yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, you're gonna want something that you can kind of block up the inlet so that the carbon can't, the activated carbon can't get out, but mm. the air can still be pulled through. Okay, that okay. makes sense. Uh, now know that any material that you add is gonna restrict the airflow which will decrease the amount of air it can push through the activated carbon. Right. So you really do want to choose a material that is as non-restrictive as possible. Hmm, but if you did add a more restrictive uh, filter or foam, would that make it last longer? Yeah, but, but that's just, just because be... you're not moving as much air through yeah. it. And I mean, then that's no good. So the pantyhose does work really well because it's a fine mesh. Nothing will get past that, but <laughs> it's it's almost invisible to airflow. Yes. Okay. It so, feels great. And it, it really, it makes me feel silky. <laughs> <laughs> TMI, TMI. I should not have pushed you into that. <laughs> you're also going to need a 12 volt power source because that's what these fans are going to run on. Mm -hmm. Now, I just made a little adapter that goes up to a JST plug mm -hmm. because that's what we've been soldering onto the ends of our 
fans. Right. But you could also run it off of a 12 volt battery mm -hmm. if you wanted to put this into a place where it, you weren't going to have access to power. Right. It, it's super hook it up low to a on power draw. Solar panel in your you, window. Exactly. Or something. Precisely. Yeah. yeah, actually, hmm. We're doing that. We're okay. going to make that. We're solar powered odor eater. Yeah. I'm an ideas guy, Pablo. You, really you build it, I'll think of it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, any 12 volt power source will work just fine. This actually does work in the car. I made a cigarette adapter. So if you've. <laughs> I'm thinking, okay, hear me out. <laughs> hear me out. A I lot of us who spend a lot okay. of times in our car. I'm just imagining you driving you, down the, the freeway with this, like, in the passenger seat. Oh, no, sorry, officer. This is just my little friend no, okay. cleaning the air in here for How me. many times have you got into a friend's car and you're like, oh, it smells a little funky here, right? Quite a few times. Well, the problem is we go to smell depth. We're in our cars all the time. We don't know that our car is starting to, to be a little bit ripe. You could leave one of these yeah. in the car. And it will just siphon away the odors. It actually does work. Nice. So the hardest part would be nonchalantly presenting it to your friend and saying, hey, maybe you should keep this in your car. <laughs> Alex. <laughs> uh, the Saturn's getting a little, Alex, getting Alex a little stinking. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we're also going to need all the 3D printed parts. Now, again, like every other project on Know How, I've given you all the STLs. They'll be in the show notes. Uh, we've designed two pieces. Uh, this part I'm calling the flow director, and this part is the 120 millimeter adapter. I, th I think I like the idea, the flow master. Flow master. Let's call it that. Yeah, <laughs> oh, but the design is super simple. When we look at this, what we want is we want a way to have air come in, mm -hmm. go through the media, through the activated carbon, and then, back and then up. get pulled out through the fan. That okay. makes sense. But it's, you know, in order for that to happen, we need to create some way to force the air moving through it to go down through the mm -hmm. container and then back up. It kind of gives us a little extra. So mm -hmm. we're not just going one way through the media. We're going down and then back up. Right. Giving you more surface area and Precisely. more of the carbon. Yeah. Precisely. And so that's what this does. This is going to go inside the jar and this is going to go on top. So when you've got a fan sucking air out of the top of this structure, mm -hmm. uh, it, there is no choice but for the air to go down, which is going to go through the carbon, right. and then back up through the funnel, which will also be filled with carbon. Smart. Yeah. You, so you made like a dual chamber. It's a dual of. chamber. <laughs> Take it looks that. like a red solo cup, though, when you use that filament. Kind of does, doesn't yeah. it? <laughs> Ready to party. I don't care. I should use the glow-in-the-dark stuff. <laughs> that would be cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you're also going to need uh, bolts. So I'm using 632s. I just pick up. Oops, I just picked up a pack from uh, from Home Depot. Mm -hmm. So you know you need something to be able to bolt down the four uh, support holes here on the 120 millimeter fan. Right. Optionally, you could pick yourself up some sealant. I got myself some inexpensive silicone sealant. Mm -hmm. uh, you did, this is totally optional. You don't need to do it. But I found that drawing a little bead of uh, of sealant along the edges here, mm -hmm. it kind of helps the fan suck through the cone and not through the edges of the fan. Right, Actually. right. You're eliminating the uh, different, uh, not vacuum leaks, but... Yeah, um, that's yeah. basically what they are. Uh, and then super high tech, you're going to need a bag or something to hold the carbon because we're going to have to pour some of this out. It does get kind of messy. Don't just pour this on your desk because there's oh, a lot yeah. of... There's fine little like particles. Like charcoal dust. Yeah. You don't, yeah, you don't want that. It's hard. It's, a, it's not fun to clean. You sound like you're speaking from experience. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I made a huge mess. <laughs> actually, the, another thing, you may actually want to rinse the contents of this first. Just give it a quick rinse and then dry yeah. them out. Because if you don't, the first time that you turn on the fan, <laughs> it's like all the fine dust just... <laughs> like, yeah, I could see that happening. I need a new keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking more like your lungs. <laughs> you like come back with the black lung. And, and, and fortunately, this, some of this is it's, uh, electrically conductive, so you have to be really oh, careful. Oh, whoa, I didn't, that would not even thought that. Yeah, yeah, if you get it on some of your motherboard or something yeah, like that. Don't, don't do that. Yeah. Uh, as for tools, you'll need a, a screwdriver, a Phillips screwdriver. You'll need pliers so you can hold the nuts, mm -hmm. uh, wire strippers, a soldering kit, and some sort of 3D printer. Now, I have pre-soldered our connectors because we've done it on the show so many times I didn't think we needed to, to do it again mm -hmm. but of course there will also be the STL files now let's go ahead and show you some of the design that went into making the pieces that are gonna go into our super cheap odor eater okay all right so Kara if you go to uh, my computer this is a Tinkercad and uh, this is w what I'm calling my my dual ended adapter uh, so this is just something that we uh, we used previously for our little project to create 
Um, remember when we were doing the... Uh, mason the, jar? Yeah, the little mason jar. Mm -hmm. So this is the same sort of design. I stretched it out a little bit in order to fit the threads. This, this is actually the most difficult thing about doing a project like this, trying to mate something that already exists with something that you're creating. Right. And so were you able to find this as an existing file? No. Oh. No, yeah. So this was a pain. These are the different oh, <laughs> trials that I went through. If you go to the overhead shot. So you shot. did a lot of prototyping. Yeah. And I, you know, some of these, like this kind of fit, but it was, it, I didn't like quite like how it sealed around the jar. Most of these were just, I made them really small because I just wanted to see if the thread would match up. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, this, this is actually worth note. When you are trying to design thread, the way that you figure out whether or not it's going to fit is you measure the distance between the threads. I don't know if you can get this on the side camera here. There we go. So there's actually a distance between where one thread ends and the other thread begins. Mm -hmm. And that's what you want to measure. Just like use a little tape measure and find in this particular case, it's about three to four millimeters between the end of, uh, of that thread and the start of the next. Hmm. Right? Yeah. So that's going to tell you whether or not you're designing this properly because you just take that and then that goes into this. Uh, but even then, I mean, yeah, you can see how many times, times I had to print. Yeah, that's tough. It's trial and error. But, mm. but, you know, the nice thing is if you just print a tiny bit, like this took me 10 minutes to print. Uh, yeah, and then you can immediately be like, oh, nope, next yeah, one. Exactly. Yeah. In fact, some of these, the reason why they're different sizes is because as it was printing, I was just looking at it going, yeah, it's yeah, not going to work. That's wrong. Stop the print. <laughs> Go on to the next one. Huh. Okay. Well, now it's out there. It exists. You did the hard part for everyone. Exactly. Now, uh, I actually am giving people all the raw files. So if you want to use a different jar, you're going to be able to use the bubble adapter that I've created. You just modify the thread to fit onto the jar that you have. Okay. Okay. So uh, go ahead and go back. What I did with this was I had to make it twice as long because I wanted to be able to completely engulf the uh, the edge of the of the jar here, but I need to make these threads match up. Now this is actually a lot easier than you might think it is. So watch, I'm going to go down here. What I want to do is I want to make this thread right here match that thread right there. So I'm going to move it down until oh, there we go until it looks like that. So right about there. There's, oh, there's uh, actually there's still a little overlay. I'm going to turn off my grid snap, and there we go. Now I have the ability to make that match exactly. There we go. So nice. one thread has run into the other, so now it's one long continuous thread. Nice. Yeah. Very yeah. cool. And actually, Chickenhead21 has a good question. Couldn't I just use the existing lid and make some sort of adapter? Yes, yeah. absolutely. In fact, the very first version of this project, that's what I did. I just didn't like how it looked. It, it was so jank. It, right. It, it, I mean, you have access to a 3D printer, right. so that helps. But for someone who doesn't, like, they could probably cobble something together. Yeah. I mean, all you'd need is you would need, uh, like, duct tape, a fan, and some sort of cone. Yeah. Like, aluminum like a, cone material. Yeah. But uh, we'll, we'll send it out to the know-it-all, see if they can come up with anything. I, Submit I, your yeah. project to It Google just looked Plus. a little too jank. I, I was like, you know what? I'm okay with jank, but this is... Right. <laughs> This is an exceptional this level is, of jank. Yeah, yeah. this is the jank, jankerific. Oh. All right, let's go on. Go to the second piece. So the second piece is this. So I had to add Ooh. my double-ended adapter to this. I'm calling this the bubble shell because what it will do is it allows me to bolt onto a 120 millimeter fan, uh -huh. and then this little shape here, this conical shape, creates a vortex. It actually does. It creates a, a little power. vortex. It helps the air to move through the fan more efficiently. Uh, but that's you know th th that's just two pieces together. The last piece was this. So this is the flow director. Now, it looks kind of oh, funky. It looks like a wizard's hat. It, it does. And uh, th this is because I went through a few different revisions of this. This is actually version three or version four. So this was the original. Uh, and the whole idea was that it would bolt onto the bottom of the fan and it would insert into the bottle like this. Mm -hmm. But I found that wasn't nearly deep enough into the... To uh, circulate yeah, inside the bottle. What would yeah. happen is you'd end up just uh, moving through the top layer of the media and right. everything down below would be untouched. Right. Bonus uh, is now you have a little safety cone, though. Precisely. You can wear you could put that on Norman. Yeah, exactly. Uh, this was the second version. So the second version, this is more like what I wanted it to be. It was going to push down through the through the bottom. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, the dimensions were kind of off on this, so it mm -hmm. messed it up. Okay. Um, 
this was the third one. And the third reason why I did this was because I made it exactly the diameter of the of the jar mm -hmm. so that it would create a tight seal. That makes sense. Yeah. Uh, the problem is using this conical thing, it means the entire piece would be really hard to push in. And then get it into Yeah, it's the... almost impossible. So what I did was I compromised between this and this, and I created this. Now this is essentially oh. that the long the long cone. Coit but tower. The part at the bottom is is actually the conical one. It's it, Oh yeah, I see what you mean. So what it does is it creates that tight seal, but only in the last 10 millimeters of the adapter. Right, then it funnels down at that angle. Precisely. So if you go back to my computer, Kara, this is what it looks like. This part right here, so that is my little cylinder. That will snug directly into my jar of activated carbon. And then this part tapers off so that it gives me a bit more room to, uh, to wiggle it into the, the container. But this whole thing should give me a nice airtight seal to force that air all the way to the bottom of the container before it comes back up. Right, but you gotta make, it, make a way for the air to get into the container. Precisely, which is what we're gonna be doing in the next segment. We're actually gonna assemble this thing in real time so people can, can use this as sort of a, a way to assemble oh. this when they wanna oh, do it. I want uh -oh. the cone. You want the cone? I you want can, the cone. You can have the cone. <laughs> it's all yours. But before we do that, let's go ahead and thank another sponsor of Know How. Hey, Brian. What's up? Uh, this is a company that mm -hmm. I wanted on the show for quite a while because we, I saw their products three years ago at uh, one of the CES events. Mm -hmm. Corning. Now, yeah. Corning makes some ex incredibly cool distance extending cables for both USB 3 and Thunderbolt. Uh, now, if you've ever tried to long, run really long lengths of USB or Thunderbolt, you know you run into all sorts of problems. Yeah. Signal degrades, you get weird connects and disconnects and reconnects. It just, it's not designed for that. You know, they have a, a maximum spec for a reason. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't it be nice if you could get all the speed of USB 3 or all the speed of Thunderbolt but rather than going a couple of feet, you could go meters and meters and meters without losing signal quality. I like that idea, especially like home networking stuff. Exactly, and that's exactly what you can do with Cording. Now, Cording has a few of these things. This is their optical Thunderbolt cable. Let me, let me show you a little bit of, of how this thing is gonna work. So uh, this is the demo kit that Leo uses. I've been wanting to use this for the longest time. This is what it actually looks like. This is their, their fiber optics. On one side, we're gonna have, uh, a, this is an old Toslink connector. Uh -huh. But uh, the cool thing about fiber is that, as we've, we've seen on the show when we talk about fiber networking, you can push light through it. And if you've got flexible enough fiber, you can push light even through the weirdest of kinks. So I've got a little laser hooked up to this. Uh, I'm not sure if you, if you go to the side view, can you see the little, uh, I don't know if you can, you can't quite see that. Let me, let me pulse it. No, it's not gonna show up on the, oh, there we go. You see that little, little LED, uh, LED uh, red thing blinking? Just a little bit, yeah. And oh, there, oh, it there is. we go. Good job. But what happens when I take a cable like this yeah. and I tie it in a knot? So let's go ahead and do this to it. That like physically hurts me when that, I watch yeah. you do and that. You really shouldn't be doing. Remember, this is this is derived from glass, glass, glass fiber. We had that fiber uh, networking episode. We, we did. showed and what would happen. We specifically told you never to do something like that, right? Mm. This this would be a nightmare. If I had done this with the fiber I used for my networking, I would have shattered yep. the fiber. It'd start over is what I tell you. But that. because Cording uses their own specialized process, you can get your signal integrity <laughs> all the way through. If you go ahead and bring the lights back down. There we go, and see, I've got my little, my little uh, light is still blinking. Woo! Why guy had a pretty good pun. What? That's not cool. Ah, uh, good one. Why guy? guy. <laughs> Bad guy. <laughs> well, folks, if you've got a long distance that you need to push your data through, if you use USB three or Thunderbolt, well, then Corning is for you. Now, Corning isn't just a company that knows media. They're a company that knows data transfer. They are behind some of the fastest runs of fiber that we have currently running across the planet. Now, Corning can greatly improve your audio video workflow with the strong, durable, and far-reaching Thunderbolt and USB 3.0 fiber optic cables, which means that whether you're into high-end video, photography, audio production, or computing, Corning's optical cables will allow you to build a convenient workspace through a superior long-distance connection. 
Uh, you've already seen how flexible and strong their cables are. They have exceptional cable runs of up to 60 meters, that's 200 feet, 200 feet for Thunderbolt and 50 meters or 165 feet for USB 3. That makes it easy to move those noisy, space consuming, heat generating, generating devices away from your workspace. It means you can put it into a closet so you don't have to worry about it sitting next to your desktop. According cables are hot swappable and you can daisy chain up to six Thunderbolt devices and you can bend or walk on Corning's ultra slim cables. Even if they're tangled, they'll keep transmitting at top speed. Now, now, Universal Audio relies on optical cables by Corning to achieve acoustic isolation in their studio when they test new equipment, such as their best-selling Thunderbolt audio interfaces. Oh, instead of investing on multiple extenders, adapters, and cables that are eventually going to fail or become a jumble of junk, turn to Corning to establish the connection that you need with one simple, long-length cable. Corning's products are available at all major electronics and professional AV retailers, including Apple stores, Amazon, B&H, and more. Now, if the pros trust Corning, don't you think you should too? Corning's cables are longer, thinner, lighter, and stronger. Go to Corning.com slash twit. That's Corning.com slash twit to save up to $130 on Thunderbolt's optical cables. Now, this promotion is valid only from June 1st to July 31st or while supplies last, whichever occurs first. Just go to Corning.com slash twit. That's Corning.com slash twit to save on their Thunderbolt cables. And we thank Corning for their support of know-how. All right, Brian, let's get making. All right, so what do we got left here? Well, what we got left is we have to actually assemble this bad mamma jamma. Oh, right. The part yeah. I always forget about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so we're going we're gonna to take this. This is sort of the prototype. It's it's outdated. This actually, I would not build them like this anymore. Uh, that was just our first go That's at the it. one you're going to just toss. We're, well, we're not going to toss it. It still works. That's it's why just, you won't name it. I just won't name it. <laughs> now, this one's going to be named Betty. <gasps> Betty. Betty. All right, so the first thing we're going to want to do is we need to take uh, a little bit of the carbon out of this jar because we need to be able to, to work with it. Right. This thing's pretty full. It's right now. pretty But you don't want to just waste it. No, so no, no. Save no. it for future. We're going to save it because you can actually, when, when they. When the smell starts getting through again, you just refill it. With you this just one. refill it. So I'm going to take, you know, about half, a good half of the material out of there. Cool. Because wh what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be taking the flow director and smushing it in. So I, I need that stuff to sort of rise up on the sides. Right. Okay. Now, let's go ahead and bolt our fan. We've already pre-soldered our. You hold that one. That's okay. that's without the connector. But this one has my standard JST connector, which means I can plug it into my adapter. I can plug it into one of my quadcopter batteries. Right. It will work just fine. We need to bolt this to this. So this is our 120 millimeter adapter. Yeah. But remember, we need to remember what which way the air is flowing. Do you remember um, how, to, how to see that? It's on the side here. I mean, I don't know if you can see it on the camera or the side shot or anything, but like if you look at the inseam of the fan, you should see two little arrows that will show you the direction of the air and the direction that the fan will be spinning. Precisely. And so what we need to do is we need to mount this on top of this adapter so that the air is flowing this way. In this particular case, as you saw, the arrow points up, mm -hmm. so we just have to do that. Now, we're going to go ahead and do this optional step. That, uh, that The silicone? The silicone. You don't have to do. Again, if you don't have it, don't do it. But I kind of like to do it just because it, it does increase the efficiency. I'm just going to draw a bead along the edge here, oh, assuming that the silicone hasn't completely... Oh, yeah, it totally has. Try it out. Yeah. You're such a perfectionist, Padre. No, I know. You just I... duct tape all of this. <laughs> Uh, yeah. And this is why you wouldn't use silicone. Okay, well, this is, this is, it kind of dried up inside. <laughs> Should you look directly at it as you were like squeezing it? Yeah, where is it? <laughs> okay, no, don't do that. Don't that's, do that's that. That's a bad idea. Wait, hold on, let me just... Get out of here. <laughs> what okay. happened? Why, is it just solidified in there? Uh, yeah, it's just like, all I have to do is poke down through it. Unfortunately, I don't, actually... Hmm. We've got to have something on the set here. Is there something in the Collins? No. Oh, really? Uh, don't do this at home, folks. This is so... Don't do this. This is You can't even... Oh. Oh, wow. Oh. What just happened? <laughs> uh, that's what happens that's a, when you do a live demo A bunch demo of plastic like this, right? in your face. Okay, you know oh, what? This man. is not... I'm going to have to poke down all the way through. Uh, so I'm not going to do it for this one, but the process is actually really simple. All you'd have to do is draw it on the outer edge. You want a little bead <laughs> so that when you attach it to this, it kind of smushes together. Right. right? That and makes then when sense. it dries, it'll make a nice seal. <laughs> but we're going to use four of our, uh, our 632 bolts. 
Uh, we want it to get through both the top and the bottom hole and then the adapter, but we don't want it so long that it's you know, leaving an unsightly piece of, uh, of metal. Right. So this, that's just about right. That gets us just about to the, where we need to be. So we're going to do this like so. See, Brian, we get to work with our hands. No problem. Yeah. Actually, why don't you do that while I explain some of the rest of the project here. Sure. So once we have this fan attached, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to add the flow director into here after mm -hmm. we've drilled holes in the top of this jar. Because what we need is we need a way for the air to get in right. outside of the cone, get sucked down to the bottom of the jar, mm -hmm. and then get pulled up through the cone. Mm -hmm. Right? Because remember, we kind of want a, a two-way uh, scrub here. That makes sense. Uh, right. We're also going to need to add something to keep the media from falling out. I'm not too worried about the sides here because we're going we're gonna to drill holes that are so small that the carbon doesn't really come out through here. But if we don't put something to restrict the media from popping out the top, anytime we knock this thing over, the carbon <laughs> could just spill out through the fan. Right. That's a huge mess, especially if you have a lot of carbon particles hitting the fan and shattering, oh. you just create dust. That's, <laughs> you just made a huge you mess. You just made a huge, huge mess. Hey, Brian, you want to play with this? Uh, I don't I don't know. Does it still have silicone left on it? No, no, no. This, this oh, is totally this something different? different? Oh, okay. Different. So, yeah, what we're going to do is we're just going to grip the... Uh, Doesn't it seem like a little overkill? Uh, yes. <laughs> what? What? See, that's how we do that. Okay. Uh, I've got, all right, yeah, I'll do that. Hey, yeah, you, you get that part. Sure. All right, so while you're working on that, I'm going to start drilling into our little media here. I've, I've got myself a Dremel tool. You can use any sort of drill. Um, I should be wearing eye protection right now, so kids, don't do what Padre does. <laughs> but uh, while Brian is uh, screwing that in, if you could go here, I'm just going to go around. Oh, sorry. <laughs> We're building. <laughs> Yeah, you keep attaching that. So I'm just gonna go around the Such precision. outer edges. If you wanted to be really precise, you could actually map these out before you drill them. Nah. But I'm not that. Also, I'm, I'm working on my obsessive compulsiveness. <laughs> Has to be an equal amount of holes. All right, so that's what that side is going to look like. And what Not I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do that to the other side as well later on. But this is going to allow the, the canister to breathe. So right. it's going to be pulling air through these holes and then down to the bottom and mm -hmm. back up through the top. Actually, you know what? While you're working on that last yeah, piece. Yeah, do, do the second let's side. Let's do the second side. Don't leave it uneven as this is taking me a I was Actually, I was longer. totally going to do that, but then I was getting bothered by the fact that the other side wasn't the same. Right? It was bothering me. They better be symmetrical, too. Uh, totally not. <laughs> Dude, no. I've been letting the drill wander. Oh, wow, this other side just looks bad. <laughs> I'm sorry, Norman Jr. <laughs> I did the Forgive best I could. me. We beat you with an ugly stick. Oh, wow, this is going to look really, really bad. It's making quite a mess, too. All right, all right, so there. All right, so we got the fan assembled. We got the fan assembled, we got our holes drilled. Uh, what we're gonna want though, is we are gonna want a piece of foam that's gonna go inside of the adapter, right? Right. Because you want, you want to stop the media from, from getting out. Mm -hmm. uh, and so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take a little piece like this, mm -hmm. actually even better. I take a little piece like this. So this is just some used foam that I had uh, and thankfully, this is sort of this is the pick and pull stuff. So it's going to allow me just to break off what I don't need. Nice. Which is just about pretty close there. It's pretty satisfying to tear that stuff I, apart yeah, too. I love the pick and pull. It's almost stuff. like bubble wrap. Not quite though. Bubble wrap still yeah. rules the roost. It's top tier. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, it'll do in a pinch. If, if you <laughs> can't find yourself any, any bubble wrap, this, this is what you use. All right, so that's about, actually, let's take off the corners here. Such a perfectionist. Well, you know, I wanted to, to do, go right. <laughs> Little Betty. There we go. So, mm, yeah, that's about right. So that will, yeah. that will be enough to hold the carbon, the activated carbon in without restricting airflow overly. Cool. And then because it's foam, I can just squeeze it in through the bottom here. 
Ta-da! Perfect. Yeah. It's not that? interfering with the fan there? Yeah, just well, you push yeah. down a little bit just to make sure that it's not. Right. And if you get oh, if you get any tugs, if you get any tears, then it tells you that you're a little bit too thick. That makes sense. Let's see. Nice. Actually, it's powered up. Let's make sure that make we're sure not scraping. No interference. There we go. Okay, so that gives us our fan with our foam. And you can still feel air coming through the top, so it's it's not completely restricted. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Now, here's the fun part. We need to push all this stuff into our jar of activated carbon. Right. So, we're so that's where we bring in the flow master. The, the flow master. Well, flow director, flow, flow master. Flow director. So this is just kind of going back and forth. So up to this point, it's really easy. But now I start the... Uh, the barrel. So this right. is the piece that's exactly the diameter of. Because you want it snug. You want. It to I do want seat. it very snug. So I'm gonna. You have probably to even put some uh, silicone on, on there. Shake and pull. Shake, shake and bake. Should we just get like a hammer or something for you? It could, but oh, I don't want to. I don't want to shatter yeah. the uh, <laughs> the carbon at the bottom. So what's happening is I'm just trying to get those little bits of carbon that are in the way. Right. Out of the way. There's some crunching. And actually, I'm going to pour a bit more out. There we go. Yeah, that gets... So Not this, bad. It's this last couple of millimeters. There we go. That are always... Problem, I did this like four times at home. All right, so now I've got my, my flow director attached. <laughs> if you go to the side here, this is what it's going to look like. I'm going to take some of the activated carbon that I took out, and I'm just going to pour it back in there. Get out of there. There you go. Oh. And by the way, I pre-washed this just because so we wouldn't oh, get a big so dust cloud. Oh, so there wasn't so much dust, yeah. Right. Good and call. then, now here's the easiest part. I just take this, this assembly that I've created, and because I used the right thread, I just screw it on the, th the top. No problem. And that crunchy, that crunchy sound mm -hmm. means it's working. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and power this thing up after, hold on. Yeah, make sure that. That's, that's totally in the way now. I'm going to have to cut that down when but, I yeah. reassemble this at home. I probably made that a little thicker than it had to be. But, you know, for demonstration purposes, you understand. Right, right. Actually, it's really, really, oh, so, really oh. too thick. So thick that the you fan won't spin. Hold on. Trial and error. Trial and that's error. That's the, the fun <laughs> well, part. Well, I mean, <laughs> I, I, used, I used foam that was too thick just because Whoa. it was really thick. Yeah, yeah, little parts of the 3D well, printer coming yeah, off. Unfortunately, that's going to happen. You're going to get a little bit of uh, material coming off just because it's... So snug. It's really snug. Yeah. And, and I you designed gotta it to do that. you snug, yeah. Yeah, if it's not snug, what's going to happen is you're just going to be spewing carbon everywhere. And, uh, folks, that's not as fun as it sounds. Mm-mm. You know, actually, what I, the best thing to do would be to cut this in, in half. In half, yeah. That's what I thought you were going to do. But I enjoy watching the process. This, see, this is, see what will Padre do next. Well, now this is basically what my late nights look like. I'm just <laughs> messing around with stuff. <laughs> I, I imagined it far more glamorous than this. And actually, Kara, Kara, right now, she's got one of my uh, my prototypes for the Green Geek series. Oh, Kara, what do you have at your desk? It's a bucket. It's a, a bucket. I was wondering what that was doing over there. It's a Home Depot bucket. It's a Home Depot bucket, but it's got a special power. I thought she was just throwing her garbage in there. Ew. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I have a Home Depot bucket garbage can. <laughs> it's a Home Depot bucket, but it has its own air circulation, power source, and light. What? And we'll, we'll talk about what that's for later on. Did you give it to her and not me because it's not dangerous? Uh... Because it's, sure. <laughs> it's not dangerous? Because it's not dangerous. If it has potential to kill, he'll usually give it to me first. Uh, no, no, no. That was like when I was going to electrocute you. Right. Remember when we did the cyborg cooling? Yes. Yeah. Well, you know, it, it wouldn't do to, in, to electrocute Kara. She's a nice person. Yeah. And so I figured you'd probably give it to her. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Now we've got it, and it shouldn't be uh, interfering with the fan. Boom. There we go. Sweet. Nice and gentle. There, there we go. go. You just have to give it a little push. Okay, so what's happening now is you yeah. can feel the airflow at the top. Mm -hmm. This, and remember, because we've created a seal, the only way for air to get out of the top is for it to be going in through these little holes, down through the carbon that's at the bottom, and then back up through the, the flow master, the flow director. 
It smells cleaner in here already. <laughs> <laughs> now, there isn't a huge amount of airflow out of this. It's, it's actually a very small amount, but that's the whole point. It's yeah. quiet. It's super quiet. People won't even know it's there. Right. So this is something that you could run right next to, say, your cat's litter box. Mm -hmm. And any of the odors that are not absorbed by the litter get absorbed by the charcoal. Nice. Yeah, I want to put one of these next to my dog bed. Yeah. Uh, I know people are going to think, well, why don't we do what we did with Dorman? Remember, we actually had two fans. And I thought about that. I was going to put the little air bubble at the top. Yeah, that's a little elaborate. But <laughs> then it gets kind of heavy. It's getting top heavy. And that you, what you don't want is you don't want it falling over. Yeah, good point. Yeah. Now, notice we still got Refill. half a jar worth, worth of carbon in here. So when, mm -hmm. when it's not doing a great job at stopping smells anymore, right. what we do is we just dump out the carbon that's in there and we add more. Right. And if it's around Christmas time and you have kids that have been bad, here you go. Here's your present. <sighs> I got a lot of coal when I was a kid. <laughs> That's why the idea came to me. Well, folks, oh. this is what we've got. So if, if Norman was too expensive for you, if you can't afford 50 to $60 for um, you know, a higher-end carbon filter along with that assembly, right. then you could always use Norman Jr. here to, to build yourself something that you can put into your car, you can run off of a 12-volt power source, you yeah. can put next to a cat's litter box. You can put any place that has a smell. In fact, I've got one of these right now running inside the refrigerator I've got in my lab. Oh, Because I got, a, I got a refrigerator off the sidewalk. Oh, one of those that yeah, like yeah. says free on it? Well, it was next to USF. It's one of our universities. Oh, and okay. I guess like at the end of the semester, someone's mm. like, ah, I don't want to bring this home. It was nice and small. Yeah. It, but it wasn't until I plugged it in where I'm like, oh. <laughs> you know that damp smell? <laughs> yeah. Mm, yeah. Gross. So even after I cleaned it with bleach, I disassembled it, it still had that smell. So I, I put this too. in it and within two days, that smell was completely gone. That's awesome. I've had coolers too that, you know, they've sat out with yeah. stuff in them for a long time and they kind of get that smell. Toss one of these exactly. in there for a while, Why clean not? it out. Give it a try. And if you want to be passive aggressive, you can put one in your coworker's cubicle. <laughs> <laughs> That's, and so in the new studio, these will just start showing up on people's right. desks. Hey, like, there's like hey, 10 of hey, them. Hey, Josh, yeah. I mean, I love you, but you smell like bird, you dude. You smell like bird, so. man. <laughs> 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 well, folks, we know that this was a lot of information but we're going to make it easy for you to recreate this project. If you want the parts list, if you want the STL files to 3D print your own parts, or if you just want our step-by-step our -step procedure, you could always get it at our show notes, which, where do we store those, Brian? Twit.tv slash KH. And uh, not only will you find the show notes and the links to everything that we talked about today, but you'll find a way to subscribe if you haven't already. So I recommend doing that. And uh, But that's not the only place you can... No. Connect with us. You should connect with us Submit on Google+. Submit projects Plus. if you wanted to show us, like we showed at the beginning of the show, your project, how you outdid us. You can do that on Google+. Plus. And uh, I guess just go to Google+, Plus and search for know-how pop-up. Yeah, exactly. Oh, actually, there are a couple of projects there from people who made air movers. Uh, remember how I talked about back in the day I abducted my computer so that the air would all exhaust outside? <laughs> yes, yeah. I well, that. people have done that. So please, if you've got pictures, if you've got videos of projects that you've done that you're particularly proud of, put them in our Google Plus page. We'll try to get them on the show. Cool. Yeah. Of course, that's not the only place you're going to find us. You're going to find us on the Twitters. You can always find me at twitter.com slash PadreSJ. And I am at cranky underscore hippo. Yeah, and uh, if you follow us, you can find out what we do every week on Know How. You mm -hmm. can see the process. I, I often post pictures of, of projects that I'm working on. You also get to see what we do when we're not doing Know How. Like, for example, you'll see Cranky Hippo at Laguna Seca. Yeah, you're going to see a lot of motorcycle pictures this weekend. Yeah. We also want to thank the third member of our crew, Hal Gumbel. Here he is, the little lovable guy. <laughs> no, it's Kara Cole, ladies and oh, gentlemen. Right, uh, Kara, the TD. Kara, what do you do here at TWIT? Um, I TD the show and TNT, Tech News Today, and I do camera operating when we go on fun live shoots. That's right. We're going to uh, wearables, wearables yeah, we'll be at, at wearables. the end of the month. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then we've also got, uh, although Kara won't be there, we've got Black Hat DEF CON. That's right. That's right. And then we've got Berlin. We're doing Berlin together. Yeah, but not Kara. <laughs> she doesn't get to go to the Sorry, fun Kara. one. <laughs> like E3? Do you remember E3? E3 was, oh, oh that was dope, God. man. Anyone Here's who could go to E3, war. man, they just missed out. Uh, yeah. You know, the awesome thing was they were handing out copies of the new Gears of War. They are just like, here, take just, it. Just yeah, take like it, candy. It. But I don't really like it, so no, I just threw, I threw it, it away. away. I was like, I'm not going to give this to anyone. 
She's hey, going to stab us. Folks, in <laughs> case you didn't know, Kara Cole is a huge fan of Gears of War. Yeah. You have, like, the Gears of War uh, edition Xbox, right? Uh, no, I don't. She's lying. I just she have the regular does. one. I don't. No, but I did pre-order the ultimate edition of the Gears of War 4, the, like, $100 one that comes with all the stuff. Okay. It's like the people who ordered the And I get the, to play uh, it, like, Master seven days Chief early. Collection with a little helmet? No, but it's not that lame. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> the Master Chief Edition with the, like, yeah. cat-sized helmet? <laughs> well, folks, that does it for this edition of Know How. Again, don't forget that you can find everything on our show notes. And, uh, you know, please, please join us in the chat room here at irc.twit.tv during our filming on Thursdays because we love to chat with you while we're going. You can serve up those puns for us. Exactly. Until next time, I'm Father Robert Ballas here. I'm Brian Burnett. And now that you know how, go filter it. Wait, Ow. can you stop it? Ow. It's not too bad. Ow. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> you kind of have to like re-engage it. <laughs>